Uh, Professor Spata has his MD and uh, PhD in uh, University of uh, Tokyo. Uh, he is a, a great uh, 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 researcher in the field of uh, cancer genomic. Uh, currently, he is the Professor uh, Laboratory of Molecular Medicine at uh, Human Genome Center, the Institute of Medical Science, the University of Tokyo, and the Chief uh, Division of Cancer Genomic, uh, National Cancer Center, uh, Japan. Uh, today we are more than happy to have his lecture uh, entitled uh, Genetic and the Mammal Risk Factor for Cholangial Carcinoma. Uh, Professor Shibata, please. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, good morning everybody. So, uh, <laughs> so, first of all, thank you for the organizer of this conference because uh, it is my great, uh, great pleasure to uh, present our data today. Actually, uh, last year, I, I visited Taiwan three times, and I like Taiwan very much. It's very similar to Japan, and uh, uh, I like the, the atmosphere and the hospitality is very good. So today, I will introduce uh, genetic and environmental risk factors of cholangio because uh, it is very uh, difficult to treat, as we heard from previous uh, speaks, uh, talks, but uh, uh, we uh, and also, we don't know about the cause of this cancer because it is uh, very uh, unique, but uh, we don't know the real uh, factors which is uh, precisely imp implicated in this cancer. Okay. So this is my uh, COI and uh, <laughs> Is that working? Ah, this is one. Okay. So uh, this is the same slide of the previous talks. As you know, that the the, uh, the frequency of the to cancer is. Relatively rare, but it's more frequent in Asia countries, including uh, Thailand and uh, China. But it is also uh, moderately uh, frequent in Japan and other Asia countries. So, and, and also it is, uh, we heard many about the uh, background, clinical background of reviatural cancer because uh, it, uh, it is very difficult to treat. And uh, because of its rareness, uh, that it is also very difficult to design clinical trials. And uh, uh, we don't know much about the genetic background of these cancers at present now. So uh, today, I uh, present some uh, uh, fact, uh, data about uh, factors uh, within the uh, culture's process in electric cancers. So it is by, from ep epidemic studies uh, already Several factors are known to be influenced, uh, associated with uh, cholangio carcinomas. Uh, as I show that there is uh, two factors, extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors. So ma the most Im important uh, factors which associate with cholangio is uh, infections, as we heard from uh, previous talks. Uh, fluke, liver fluke infection is very important factors of this cancer, but also uh, several papers, several groups also reported the hepatitis virus infection also associated with, uh, uh, ex especially in the intrahepatic cholangio. And also, uh, clinic, uh, chronic inflammations like uh, uh, primary sclerosis cholangio, cholangitis, or garber storm are uh, reported to be associated with, with a BT, uh, uh, BTC. So, uh, infections or chronic inflammation is a major uh, factors of this cancer. And also, uh, I will show some data today, but we also found some a very unique environmental factors associated with cholangio. We, in, uh, in Japan, we have some a very unique occupational uh, cholangio cancers happening in, the, in Japan. And also, uh, there are uh, some report interesting intrinsic factors is, I mean, genetic factors is also associated with Coranjo, but it is relatively uh, unknown, and I'm very interested in uh, 
uh, GWAS study is now studying in this cancer. So we will see uh, more uh, genes which should be, which would be associated with uh, cholangio. But at present, uh, DNA repair deficiency uh, reported to associate with cholangio. So uh, we, uh, uh, before going to the in detail of the, the uh, in the intrinsic factors, I'll show uh, background of the uh, d mutation signatures because uh, uh, based on the genomic data, we cannot predict the cause of cancers uh, of, of different uh, types. So here is some examples already known, but uh, uh, it's not, it is not associated with cholangio, but uh, in, a, in this is an example of lung cancer or liver cancers, but if uh, they have unique uh, ep epidemic backgrounds, like this is in this, in, liver, in lung cancer cases, this smoking associated with specific mutation patterns, mutation patterns, and this is liver cancer, this is uh, aflatoxin, uh, a, a new chemical associated with liver cancer, uh, aflatoxin associated with liver cancer has also very unique mutation patterns. I mean, in uh, lung cancer, uh, smokers has more C2A substitutions compared to the non-smoker cases. And in uh, aflatoxin associated liver cancer, also C2A substitution is more frequent. So uh, these uh, previous studies suggest that the unique environment factors or unique culture process leaves very characteristic DNA mutation uh, signatures. Based on uh, more uh, globally, I mean, more generally, we, collect, we collected more than several thousand of the cancer genomes now, so we can infer the unique mutation patterns in the human cancer genomes. So using this data set, uh, we are now more than 30 different mutation patterns exist in the human cancer genome. And you, interestingly, these signatures associated with unique uh, uh, characteristic factors or cause of cancers, like a smoking or UV exposure or several DNA mutation, uh, DNA repair deficiencies. So, uh, and uh, so here is one example. Here is signature one is associated with age, and other signatures associated with apoptotic activation or uh, some signatures are associated with aflatoxin exposures. So, based on genome data. We can now infer what kind of causes is underlying this uh, cancer. So uh, we are studying the cancer genome sequence of Corangio. This is the International Cancer Genome Consortium, and we uh, started uh, three projects: liver cancer, bilateral cancers, and gastric cancers in these consortiums. And in a can in a uh, cancer in a bilateral cancer project, we uh, collaborate. I'm sorry, we, we are groups and also Singapore group uh, joined together to deposit cancer genome data in these consortiums. So in a bilateral cancer ICGC project, we uh, previously reported more than 260 uh, genome data of uh, Japanese uh, liver bilateral cancer cases. So here is a uh, uh, we have more than 140 cases of intrahepatic and 86 uh, extrahepatic and 29 arbor cases. So we did whole exome sequencing and RNA seq, but I show whole exome sequence of data today. And uh, as I said, that the mutation signatures associated with unique uh, cancer causes. So now we have uh, more than 200 cancer, cholangio cancer genome data, so we can examine the what kind of mutation signatures exist in the uh, cholangio uh, genomes. So this is from Japanese uh, BTC cases, and uh, in, uh, uh, based on the mutation signatures, we, f we first found that uh, uh, depending on the lo tumor location, I mean intrahepatic and extrahepatic and gallbladder has a, a slightly <coughs> significant different uh, pattern of mutation signatures. I mean, based on the, I mean, the substitution patterns of DNA, DNA mutation, suggesting that these different tumor type, I mean, uh, location associated with different mutation processes. And based on uh, the uh, genome data, 
uh, in, in, I mean, 200 exome sequence data, we extracted two unique signatures in this data in uh, samples. Uh, one is apobec associated signatures, the other is age associated signatures. So, uh, based on these data, we find that probably apobec activation and also age associated is uh, one of the major uh, mutation process in a coral geo. And uh, we also collaborate with Singapore group because Singapore has more sample from Thailand. <coughs> and they have fluke positive cases. In Japan, we don't have any uh, fluke cases. We have fluke negative cases. So we collaborate with Singapore groups and we can now compare with the difference between the fluke positive and fluke negative CCA. And uh, this is uh, reported a uh, couple of years ago. And uh, here is, uh, this is just a, a, a molecular profiling of fluke uh, this is fluke positive cases, and this is another fluke negative. This is fluke uh, showing that this is this cluster is fluke positive cases, and this is fluke negative cases. And you see, and this is uh, some driver genes, and you see that uh, more mutation occur in uh, fluke positive cases. So, and uh, we found that several. Uh, uh, difference of molecular subtype between the fluke positive case and the fluke negative cases. So uh, this is molecular uh, profiling of fluke uh, positive and negative CCA. And then uh, we also examine the mutation signature of fluke uh, positive and negative cases. But in our, our data set, we didn't find any specific mutation pattern, sig mutation signatures associated with fluke infection, suggesting that there is fluke in infection itself does not induce specific mutation signatures. But interestingly, fluke infection was associated with specific unique epigenetic subtypes in uh, BTC. Here is, <laughs> this is a mutation profiling of our, uh, these samples, and this is uh, fluke positive cases. And you see that fluke positive cases have very uh, uh, isolated different uh, maturation patterns compared to the fluke negative cases. So, so Fluke infection has some impact on the epigenetic phenotype of Corangio. And also, uh, so this uh, fluke positive subtype has very uh, hypermaturation depend on occurs in the CPG island, and also uh, uh, some signatures are more frequently detected in the uh, fluke positive of cluster ones. So uh, fluke associated uh, epigenetic subtype has some unique gen genomic uh, features. And also, uh, it's a, it, this is another story. So as I said, we found very unique occupational crangio in Japan, in Osaka. Uh, this is some workers in offset color uh, printing companies. We have very high frequency of crangio in this company. And uniquely, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, Occasional cases have very happened in young patients, and with uh, they so and they expose some some unique chemical compounds. So uh, we also very interested in, in this unique uh, uh, cases, and we did some exome sequence of these samples, and we found that very uh, these occupational cancer cases has, has very unique uh, mutation signatures. Here is uh, patterns, and, uh, and this is a uh, 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 large cohort of uh, Coranjo, and this uh, blue ones has uh, this uh, occupational uh, signatures, and this, uh, some case, this ca these cases are all occupational uh, Coranjo. So I mean, in the occupational Coranjo, cancer has a very unique uh, mutation signatures, which suggesting that some unique uh, chemical exposure or culture exposure is associated with these occupational cases, occupational coronal cases. And this is, uh, this uh, unique signature does not exist in other non-occupational cases. So it's very specific to the, this uh, uh, occupational cases. And probably some, uh, chemi some chemical exposure is associated with uh, these coronal cases. And we move to the interesting uh, factors. As I said, that uh, there is literally uh, is known about uh, uh, germline factors which associate with uh, Corangio, but uh, uh, previous studies 
or reported that uh, uh, DNA repair deficits such as Lynch syndrome is uh, uh, associated with uh, bilateral cancer cases. But uh, if you some specific DNA mutation associated with uh, the uh, uh, frequency of cholangio, probably uh, they should be in, inactivated in uh, somatic hits, I mean, two hit series so in, in uh, cancer genomes. So uh, if you examine the somatic uh, profiling of mutations, you, should, you, sh you may find some uh, candidate of the germline uh, associated genes. So moving to the each genes, we also examine the mutation uh, frequency of uh, BTC. As I said, we sequenced in more than 200 cases, and we counted the uh, total mutation burden of our samples. And in, in this is Japanese cases, but we found that, uh, sorry, uh, about 60% of cases has a hypermutated cases. I mean, uh, it, uh, about 6% uh, of cases has a more mutation, a uh, high total mutation burden. And in these uh, cases, uh, they have high expression of, of some immune checkpoint molecules. So uh, this uh, could be associated, to, this could be uh, benefited by the uh, anti-immunity anti therapies. But as I said, that the uh, Lynch syndromes are associated with BTC, so DNA uh, hypermutation could be also uh, one of the cause of the uh, B drug cancers. And uh, we also did uh, uh, to uh, extract a, a driver genes of the BTC, and we found several, uh, uh, more than 30 uh, significant emitted genes in a cohort, including P53, KRA, SMAT4, et cetera. But interestingly, uh, we found some uh, blacker and uh, BAP1 mutations in uh, our cohort. Uh, it's about uh, less than 10 percent of cases has uh, BRCA mutation, BRCA, especially BRCA2 and uh, BAP1 mutations. And interestingly, familiar BTC uh, cases was very rare, but is reported. And germline BAP1 mutation was reported in these cases. So probably BAP1 could be the one of the candidate of the germline uh, associated with germline. Uh, uh, genes for the coronal carcinoma, uh, associated coronal carcinomas. And we uh, uh, classified our, our samples based on the gene next profile. And uh, here is, we, we found several subtypes of the bilirubin cancer in our cohort. But interestingly, some, this uh, subtype three has a very unique uh, patterns because uh, they have more uh, BAP1 mutations, IDH1 mutations, and FGF diffusions. And uh, so uh, uh, this subtype could be associated with unique uh, expression profiling. And, uh, and also, uh, as I said, BAP1 could be the one of the candidates of the germline uh, genes for the crunch, but if uh, BAP1 is associated is mutated, uh, they have very specific uh, subtype of the corangio. Uh, so here is my uh, summary of uh, presentations. As I said, that, uh, there is uh, several environmental factors have been reported to be corangio, BTC, but uh, we also found very rare occupational cases which has very unique uh, mutation signatures suggesting that this associated with some exposure of unique DNA mutagenic substance. We are now ex e uh, examining the uh, several uh, chemicals to uh, check that these chemicals induce the, these, the same mutagenic signatures in, uh, in, in the cell line models. And uh, uh, as I said, that uh, we, if we compare to the intrahepatic, extrahepatic and global cases, uh, this uh, tumor location has uh, show the significant different mutation patterns, suggesting there is several, uh, these cancer type subtypes have the different uh, characteristic processes. 
And also, uh, liver fluke infection itself doesn't induce specific mutation signatures, but uh, they associate with specific epigenetic subtypes with some unique genomic features. Uh, for germline, we uh, split, uh, little is known about uh, variations which associate with BTC risk. Uh, DNA dependent deficiency syndrome like Lynch syndrome is associated with BTC and could be the target of immune tick-borne inhibitors. And BAP1 uh, variations could also be a strong candidate, but we need more samples, we need more cases to be uh, confirmed, to confirm this uh, result. So here is, this is a sum, this is acknowledgement, this study, this study was mainly done in the National Cancer Center the week on the University of Tokyo, but we collaborated with several groups in Japan and also in Singapore. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you. Uh, now that this topic is open for discussion. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Huang. Thank you for your nice talk. You know, in, I'm a pathology. As you know, the pathology, the cholangeal carcinoma, the histology classification have some progress. So actually, I think they, because the morphology is quite different and the outcome may be all different because um, now they mainly divided by bioduct type and the stem cell-like type. And for those stem cell-like, they, they may combine with hepatocellular carcinoma, yeah, yeah. and they may associate. So did you compare the genetic difference from uh, on these kind of historic subtypes? Because they, the histology is quite different because it seems that the conventional, they call the bile duct type, is more like a conventional cholangeal carcinoma, more aggressive. Yeah, so yeah, yes. Uh, we did several, we did some analysis between this genotype and the phenotype, I mean the uh, histological subtypes. Uh, at present, we don't see much uh, correlation between the histology and this uh, sub, I mean the genotypes. And, but interestingly, as I said, that stem cell like or combined type, I mean ICC and uh, HCC is very unique uh, subtype and uh, uh, we didn't do that study, but several groups also did some genomic analysis of this combined type, and they, as they say, they are more similar to the hepatocellular carcinoma, not in the intrahepatic cholangeal. So uh, it's uh, a little dif distinct from uh, conventional cholangeal. So they, probably they have their unique subtype or some, some phenotype, and uh, more similar to the HCC, not to the cholangeal. Uh, Professor Sipala, you have uh, done a, a very comprehensive uh, genetic analysis and uh, find this, uh, some of them are linked to environmental risk. Uh, my question is, uh, are there any uh, genetic uh, change uh, linked to uh, treatment outcome or prognosis? Meaning, uh, uh, outcome of the... Uh, or prognosis of the patients. Yeah, so based on the gene expression profile, we found subgroups associated with uh, prognosis, but based on genetics alone, it is a little bit very difficult to pick up some specific groups. But uh, probably uh, genetics may predict the target of therapy, so a decision of the therapy, but not probably associated with uh, uh, prognosis. Thank you.